Welcome to this episode of Adobe Live. I'm Flynn, and I'm joined by illustrator Dale Bugini. Uh, what did we cover today? Uh, today we covered some typography stuff, um, a lot of Photoshop work, uh, transferring it into uh, Photoshop from a scan or a photo, some illustrator work, and adding some textures and brushes that we found as resources online and stuff, yeah. yeah cool, it's a good time. We hope you guys enjoy. everyone and welcome to Adobe Live. I am Flynn and I'm joined by a good friend of the show, Dale Bagini. How are you, man? I'm good. Good to be back again. Yeah. Welcome back. We we're just going through and I was thinking, it feels like you're only on yesterday. It's been but a actually, couple of months, actually. It was episode 20. Feels like yesterday, that's how it good does. it is. <laughs> it does. We've done some stuff together since then, I think, so maybe that's, maybe that's why it feels special. Um, shout out to everyone in the chat. Please say hello. Um, Arthur, hi, how are you going? And Ben, um, good friend of the show too. How are you, Ben? It's good. I'm glad you're ready for some letters because that is what we're doing today. Um, we're going to be chatting about, is it typography or is it lettering? Um, let's <laughs> call it hand lettering by Dale. It's... We were chatting about the semantics of this, like you know the differences between typography, like lettering, yeah. um, and the actual differences between the two. And, and creating fonts from scratch, that's not this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'm just going to go with like, it's my style of hand lettering and how I compose for art. Yeah. So to the purists out there, I know this is not the right way, but this is the art by Dale way, so be nice. I love that. Be nice. Yeah. But that's the thing with like this sort of thing. There's so many ways to kind of solve a problem, right? So many okay. ways to design, so many ways to, to create your work. Um, and we kind of touch on a couple of different methods and we're going to zero in on one specifically today. Yeah which is kind of a good way to do things. Yeah, cool. I quite like. Uh, Festus, what's up? Wellington in the house. Alex, hello. Uh, font versus tie face still confuses me Me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll... Um, well, We're, good. I'm glad we got that out yeah. of the way. <laughs> so no no judgment. Everyone's new to this. Uh, you can be as confused as you want to be. I don't think anyone's judging. I love this. It's like we're learning together. Yeah. Um, so if... If you're watching and you'd love to join in on the chat, you can sign in the top right-hand corner and use your Adobe ID. Come in and say hi. We'd love to um, have questions from you. Uh, love to hear from you, hear where, where you're from. I think last week we had an art class. Um, I can't remember where you guys were from, but it'd be great to see if you guys are there again because we love that. I love the idea of just like being up in the corner yeah, definitely. of the art room. Just we never had that when I was in art school. No, we just had a really boring art teacher that oh, no. hated everything we did. Yeah, I had a I had an art teacher that like made me do something really super colourful, and that, by the end of my project, I did not like it at all. But here we are. So here we are. We made it. <laughs> well, here you are. I'm I'm creativity adjacent. <laughs> Hi, Christy. Um, good to see you in the chat. So feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, it's a bit more of a freestyle kind of session today, yeah. I think. We're going to go through a whole bunch of different things. So um, we'd love to have some questions as we go through. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so why don't you take it away and tell us like a little bit about kind of what we're going to spend our time doing? All right, cool. Well, first, I think it's probably important to show you what we mean by, I guess, art integration and um, mm. being conscious of typography in the work that I do personally. Um, so I'm just going to show you a few pieces that are um, online on my website, dalebegini.com. And basically, as a snapshot, you can see that type is kind of, it's it's kind of scattered in there, but it's it's all relevant and it's always there in some form way, shape or form, whether it's um, handwritten typography or I'm using fonts that I bought or um, I'm using a system font that I can go in and add my own little spin to. Mm. But um, basically, I'm just going to talk about, well, it's hard to say the right or wrong way to use type. Um, I think you need to be conscious that fonts come at a cost. Um, be, be conscious that like if you are using a font that is hand handcrafted or you know it looks good off the internet just be conscious that someone's made that and not to just go straight in and rip it off and try to right. make profit off it because it's um respect to all artists mm. um but in saying that there are ways that i will utilize fonts um into an artwork basically and i might use a system font or fonts that i've i've got from 
various websites and I might add some details in there. Um, this is kind of older, this piece, but it, uh, the same principles are there. Um, there's some system fonts versus like fonts that I've created um, based off a font. Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna talk about a few ways that I can get to that point versus hand drawing, scanning, mm. creating digital art. So um, yeah, like even in, in this example, like this is essentially you're creating an image out of out of just letters, Correct. essentially, and then so using your letters as a base and then building out. Yeah. And as we were going through your work just before we started started broadcasting, um, we noticed that there was like a whole a whole myriad ways of approaching this, but everything has a little bit of type in there somehow. Yeah. So I, I guess the principle, well, like everyone's who has seen the live streams before where I've done my work, it's always the same principles for everything I do. The typography is no exception. Um, I'll start off with these little concept drawings. Apologies that the screen's not too big, but um, I'll still rough it out and make sure that I'm, I'm crafting this piece to be an artwork, not just a bunch of letters mm. with an artwork, if that makes any sense. So this one's a good example of um, starting off with this little rough layout thing happening up there, then just using a few fonts that I might go in later and you know, maybe only I just like the shape of some of those fonts. So you can see I've got a bit of um, illustration versus typography there. Right. Um, but yeah, again, then I'll go in and I'll I'll add all the necessary details to make it my own. And um, you know, there's no there's no denying I've used fonts, you know, that I've bought or I've I've found online. Um, but I do try to make them my own. I try to warp them and. Right. Just craft them a little bit, just so it mm. doesn't look like a direct, you know, steal and a little bit of a lazy way out. So, but, you know, people create these things to create convenience for artists like us. You know, yeah. um, it's all a part of a, you know, streamlined um, workflow. And I think that's why we all use them consciously and, and creatively to our advantage. Yeah. Yeah. It's like using a, using a brush and creating your own brushes, right? Like you can do both, but mm -hmm. you know, if there's an amazing brush set out there, yep. you know, you, you know, you use it like, yeah, cause and because it's there and it's available. And I think it's just, well, it's 2019 now. Um, I remember I used to struggle really hard to, to do, um, watercolor painting and stuff like that. Right. And now there's just ways I can jump online, buy a brush set and it's doing all the craft for me. Mm. Is it lazy or is it just, a smarter workflow. Yeah, you know? is it efficient? Yeah. Well, that's what this is. So I'm going to try to show an efficient way that I create some of this typography. Um, but I might just jump straight into Photoshop and we can have a, start having a look. Cool. Sounds good. Hey, uh, Ken, Ken C and James C, you related? No. Hey, um, Tasmania in the house, which is super cool. Yeah, Festus was saying, grew up with a friend who's a hand lettering sign painter in London. Oh, no. That's, that's cool. Uh, it's such a, like interesting industry like it's almost like a like a lost art we were just talking before about like murals and everything yeah. and like the idea of that that hand done aesthetic is like you can't beat it yeah because it's so authentic right and that's why i feel like i might be stepping on a few toes here i don't want to offend anybody but i i, I have a true passion for um sign writing in particular i just think that it's an amazing craft um and what i've learned in my workflow directly stems from there without mm. I mean there's designers that use calculations to map out their words and things like that I'm right. horrible at math so mine's a very freestyle approach so mm. yeah all power to the handwriting guys and the sign writing but this is just going to be a bit of a, a rough look at how I do it that's cool <laughs> but, super um, cool alright so so basically I might talk about this so crafting fonts from like handwritten fonts so this is just a, a whole bunch of like type versions that that might become something they might just end up in a book you know lying around and maybe reference later on you'll come back and say oh remember that bandits logo i did with the hat yep it's there blah blah, blah. um otherwise i might just scan those in and have them online while i'm working on a project this project is by no means a real project so mm -hmm. if there's a company out there called bandit social club <laughs> feel free to um email me or talk to me but um so this is just going to be our little point of reference so i've done a whole series of um so biro sketching and and texted um sketching and you can see that it so my scanner broke so i had to do this on my phone but it still retains 
you can still see it retains a lot of those brush strokes and like the imperfections and things like that in this mm. font in particular. But um, if you don't have a scanner, don't swear, just photo. It's take pretty amazing photo. what we can do just with our phones in our pocket. It's so convenient. These days. It's less stress and I, I did try to fix my scanner, but it was taking too long and this took two seconds, so there you mm. go. Um, yeah, so I've got my scan in here or my photo and maybe I don't want to use any of those, but I see some that have some potential. So I might scan this in and then I'll go into my levels and I'll just really quickly show you. Just to tidy it up, I actually, I lie, I'll convert it to grayscale, just get rid of any of those colors in there. Let's just focus in on this part here. So I'll go into levels and I'm just gonna bump up the brightness of this. Pull the blacks up. Just trying to get rid of the, lighten up the background and. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just use the highlight dropper and, and bring out the white, mm -hmm. just so that we can get more of a, a vibe of what's going on. And you can see as I'm lightening this, for example, now I can see that that texture that I used is mm. quite, you know, it's giving us some show through and some real deep parts, whether or not that's that's the vibe you want. Um, if you know my art, I like it to be quite solid and clean, but um, mm. I'm gonna, today I'm gonna try to do a little bit of textured fonts. Um, so I'll go in and I'll, I'll play with the levels and I'll, I'll get that black to this kind of point where it now looks like maybe they were already drawn in Photoshop or you've right. already got your sketch in. Do you, will you often draw using a sketchbook? Um, for this initial stage, I still do have like sketchbooks full of just like really rough, like this stuff, I, I think it's really important to have it and have that connection to drawing by hand because mm. even though I use this tablet and it's like drawing on paper, I still, I still am very conscious that drawing on paper, like you can't beat it and it's nice to have something to flick through. I right. guess like it's just as a research kind of tool. Mm. But um, for this kind of thing, I would just really roughly do it, get them all on paper and then get them into the computer as quick as possible. And then from this point, there's a couple of things we can do. So I might talk about maybe using one of these fonts as um, like the bones for a new font. So let's just pick any of these fonts. I'm just gonna, or do you wanna pick Flynn? Do you like any of those fonts? Ooh. I think I like that fourth one down, like this, this one. This one? All right, yeah. cool. This is the guy here that Flynn chose. So what I'll do, I'll just make another file, a new file. I feel like you could get a really nice cocktail at the Bandit's Social Club. It feels like that, but it could just be a bunch of guys that like go around beating on people. <laughs> like <laughs> this, is my, this is my experience living in Surrey Hills <laughs> compared to like other places, right? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna size this up to 600 DPI just just for the sake of having a, a nice size file. Excuse the so why would you do 600 DPI instead of like doubling the size of your canvas or something like that? Um, I just out of habit. I just know that 600 for if I'm gonna drag it into Illustrator to do some work. Yeah. Especially with fonts, if I want to do a live trace, um, it just picks it up real clean. Um, right. I could just, and I, I kind of like to just have a fresh uh, fresh canvas all the time. Mm. I probably have too many windows open most of the time, but I'll just drag that into here. All right. And then, so now I've got this in here. I'll just scale it up. And I can already see that it's an okay font. Like, it's, it's not bad, but I can see that the B is maybe not as thick as the rest of it, so it's kind of throwing me a little bit. Mm. So what I'll do... So like like the, the weight kind of thing? Yeah, the of weight, the, so of the, yeah. especially of the curve parts. I don't know if you can see my where I'm, I'm pointing when yeah. I'm talking. Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit thin. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what I wanted, maybe it's not, but for this, we're just gonna use this as the bone, so we like kind of where, where it sits. And then I'll just lower the opacity of that and then I will pick, you can use any brush, whatever you feel like, but I'll use the hard round pressure size, which I continually talk about in every stream. So, so basically 
now we all know that there's a there's a baseline and there, there should be like a, a top line and a middle right that's if any typographers are watching that's what they'll assure we should have right but this is my version and i won't use any of them i kind of like going in a little bit free and and having room to move um i think the principles of the typography stays there um the downstrokes are usually thicker than the upstrokes and things like that. Um, right. Descenders, ascenders. We're not going to get technical, um, but I'll use this, and and basically I'll just go in and start creating a new set of lines, and it's really messy. But you can see I'm not following that line exactly. I'm I'm kind of. I'm using it how to my advantage where I want to. Like, mm. so I know that line's there, that's good, but it's not thick enough. So this one as well, maybe I want to thicken that one up and maybe I don't want it to flick up so much. So I just go in. And it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit weird because I'm not, it's almost like I'm ignoring the lines that I've drawn. Yeah, it's quite different to what's there. Exactly. Like so I, and going back, I just, I'm not happy with the font. So now that it's in there and I've got the core font written, I think it looks fine. But now I can go in and start like really fine tuning like angles and things like that. So, mm. I mean, everything I do is client based really so if if you were the client and you said you liked it as is mm. i could simply just pull that straight into right um illustrator and start you know start composing the vector but for for the sake of this exercise i think it's nice to know that you can kind of go in and find where it would benefit from being perfected and i yeah. think the b is a is a real solid standout for being too thin in that mm. um i think it's funny because in this in this day and age, like handwritten or hand drawn wins every time. Like it's people just like that aesthetic of things being a little bit not perfect and you know yeah. a little bit different in in each letter. Um, so you can get away with it, which is great. But um, like I said, I'm just a creature of habit, and I love things to be clean or like make some sort of sense. So I'm just gonna go in and basically I draw all these letters. And you can just trace it. If you want to just trace it, it's fine. Because mm. you can then go in later and make it thicker with a brush or something. But I just want to get some consistency out of the lines. And talking of consistency, do you ever like go, oh yeah, I nailed that A. I'm going to use that A as the base, as the base of my D. Um, or anything like that? Or do you... You would think Or that. is that like a high high, high treason crime? Um, no, I, I would use that for the, the, the D usually. Um, mm. But I am trying to get more of a, a like a loose kind of look here. So I mm. want them to be a little bit different. Yeah. Um, but I've done it before, yeah. And I think... So it's a case by case kind of thing. Yeah. Depending I mean, on what you're trying to... I just think to. If, it, if it works, then go for it. I'd... I don't stress out too much about people picking up on that stuff. Um, mm. I know typography is one of those things you should probably be very conscious because there are a lot of people that are, are highly trained and mm. love typography. So they might be watching thinking everything I'm doing is like, it's backwards. Like it's, <laughs> it shouldn't be even done like that, period. But we're all friends here. We are. We're, we're, we're learning together. Yeah, we're playing nice. And this is just one way that you can do it. So right. yeah, I'm just gonna keep going through this. As you do that, Festus was asking, mm -hmm. um, is that a Wacom tablet with the operating system inside? Uh, no. So this is a, a 22 inch Pro Wacom. It's one of their new ones. Um, this is running, there are cables at the back here. Um, it's running down to a Mac mini um, under the table. It's, um, there's only a few that are standalone, um, but they don't come this big, so. Mm. But this is, this is great. This is, um, it's really, it's really quick, but I think that's the Mac Mini doing all the hard work. Mm. So yeah, I'm just still going. And what do you have at home? You have like a big Wacom at home yeah, as well? Yeah, I've got the 24, 24 inch. Mm. I think it's the HD, could be wrong. But um, yeah, that's my baby. <laughs> it's literally bigger than my baby. <laughs> Is that what you get most of your work done on at home, like home um, permanently set up? 
space? Yeah, most of the time it's just because it is such a big device, it's it's hard to kind of flick between them. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll stay on that thing most of the time. So what do you think? This is looking really rough. But I love it. It's cool. There's such a confidence in the strokes that you do, which is something I could never get. Um, like as a designer, like when we were doing this stuff back in the day, yeah, it's like that really quick but very confident kind yeah. of. I know it's still a sketch at this stage, but you can see how some of them are like almost perfect. Like yeah, the, the think, little quick hook and all that sort of stuff. I think that's that's all just comes down to time and mm. and and spending so much time watching other people how they work. Because I always thought that too. I'm like, why are they so quick? And it's really yeah. rough, but it looks amazing. Mm. Well, this does not look. It, this looks far from amazing. As you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. But that's our new base. So I'll probably send this back to client Flint. Right. Flint. Flint. I just read bandits and combined your name. <laughs> I answer. I respond to Flint. That's, <laughs> Flint. That's close enough. It's better than uh, Glenn, which I get all the time. <laughs> don't ask yeah, me why. I don't why. know if you even look like a Glenn, but what does a Glenn look like? I don't know. I got an Uncle Glenn, but he, he, you're much better looking you than him. You don't think I look like Uncle Glenn? No, <laughs> thank God. Um, Uncle Glenn, I hope you're watching. <laughs> so that's um, there's a comparison to where we were and, and what it is now. Um, I've eliminated some of that real hard flat bottom, um, and the B is a bit more considered to the rest of the typography. So now you can see that you can scan it in and utilize that as your base and you know, just ad advance from there, or you can go straight over it, and like we said, you can you can do the whole thing just line for line. It's mm. it all depends on, I guess, what you and your client consider right. Yeah. So um, now that I've I've got this, I might quickly like just shade it in, and then probably just send it over for approval to someone. But just so that we can get a better idea, I just color. Do a light so I know what's going on. And yeah, you, you just, mentioned like um, sharing kind of initial sketch back with the client. Yeah. Is that is that typically the stage that you'll share something with a client? Uh, like, um, like one round? Like I realize this is a yeah. just a specific just type specific project, but like for your other projects, is that typically at the stage that you'll send and go, cool, this is what I'm gonna do. Is everything we, yeah. we happy well, here? Well, because you can see that I've I've made it significantly different. Like yep. there's there's probably every reason it should go back and and say hey so why I did this and what I think is it looks better like this, mm. um, and then but I would probably just do it like more like this. I'd just go in and actually like get rid of all the so basically give them an, a revised but still still in probably this is about as long as I'd take and coloring it in. Right. You know, but just so they get a better idea of, okay, well, you've changed it, but now what are you doing? Like, so where's it going to go from here? Yeah. So I'm just going to... So you want it to still look a little bit, a little bit like it's a work in progress uh, yeah, as well? Yeah, I don't want them to think, oh, well, is that how it's going to look like? Because there's probably... I'm probably going to redraw it two to three times before I'm actually going into vectorize or um, finish it into the artwork or... Mm. So, and this is only type based, like you said. So we haven't, I haven't got an artwork that's going along with this just yet. We're mm. just, we're basing this on, well, you've only asked for a font, so this is what you're getting. Mm. And typically, I'd end, I'd, I'd probably send it back like in this kind of fashion. So you can see it's still rough, but it's, I've gotten rid of some of those. I went over the lines. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> anyway, so I'll go in and I'll just tidy it up, and that's kind of what they'll see. Yeah. So they'll get that version and it's just a refined version basically of what they had and I might put in like might just put in some dummy copy underneath on social club. Just using whatever font, let's just pick any. Oh. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna use this. It's a good question from Catherine. She asks, um, why not just drop it straight into Illustrator and vector it? Well, uh, the current 
graphic or the original one? Because I guess the difference is um, if I took that original one and just vectored it straight away, then I'm stuck in that kind of format. Right. I can go in and adjust it and stuff, but I feel like I've got more control in conceptual time. Yeah. Um, vector, li li live tracing it or, um, yeah, just putting it into vector format straight away, I feel like it instantly puts me in a mind frame that not, that's how it has to stay and that's we right. can't divert from here. At least if I say these are the bones, so this is the bones of the design, um, I've amended it to what I see fit to, to fix mm. it up. Um, I probably took it too far here, but that's fine. Um, I think I've still got a lot of control and creative direction um, as an artist at this point. Mm. And the client is paying you for your service t as a whole. So, I mean, it's a bit of a cop out for me to just go, yep, yeah, boom, live trace, done, here's your logo. Right. Um, whether or not that's um, insulting anyone, I think just being a little bit more mindful of the process that goes into it is, mm. is it's a nice consideration and I think the client will appreciate it a lot more. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, so that's our that's our Bandit Social Club logo. It's going off for approval. And then from here, if they make any tweaks, um, maybe they want a, like a, a stroke or something. Give it more oomph. Yeah, like we want it to just be like you're yelling at things. So <laughs> let's just put it underlined to make it. All right, so the, the changes are in and that was that was the feedback? Yeah, that was feedback. Just put an underline in. So now we've got its underline. And Made a, it faster. And look, even a full stop. <laughs> so from here, I, I would have to go into it again. And I know it sounds like I'm, I'm doubling up, but I would go over this again. Probably the whole logo would be handy. So I'll go over this again, low opacity. And now I'll just go in and I know that that's... That's basically exactly how we want it. Um, this part's kind of up to each artist individually. Maybe you want this artwork to be um, like a real clean cut design or you want it to have a little bit of um, edge to it. Um, people like textured fonts and things like that I've, I've come to realize. Um, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a, an artwork using this new brush set from from True Grit. That's which... cool. That f that goes into a question from Ken. Um, was asking which brushes use for sketching and inking. So you were just using the normal preset. Yeah. Preset. That was just a hard pressure. Uh, it's called hard round pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Hard round pressure size, and that's just under general brushes in Photoshop. But um, obviously there's a lot of a ton of um, resource websites. But um, True Grit's probably one of my favorite. Um, so they just released this rusty nib kit and it's got to be the best one that I know of so far. Mm. That gives you a little bit of um, a bit more texture on those edges so you'll see it as I draw. Yeah, I think so often when we talk about um, textures mm -hmm. and brushes, I think the two names that come up are Carl T. Webster and the True Grit, which yeah. is Andrew Faircloud, mm -hmm. who is actually an Australian um, living yeah. over in the US. Doing really well. Yeah. I mean, I and this is no, like I'm not biased, I just think it's a, it's the most convenient place to get it for me. Um, I think I've followed him as an artist for a few years and when he started releasing these and doing art packs with other artists, I thought it was really cool. So I feel like when you buy these brushes from guys like that, you're supporting the art community. Yeah. So, mm. um, but there are a ton of them. Kyle's are amazing, and we're lucky enough to get them kind of free. So, yeah, they're now part. part he's Adobe employee and everything. It's so, pretty cool, actually. Yeah. So yeah. Whenever he comes up with new brushes, they're always as part of what's in the Creative Cloud subscription. So it's pretty cool. So if anyone, I'm not I'm keeping an eye out for Andrew Faircloud to. Pop up one yeah. day. <laughs> we should we should get him in here. We should. I wonder if he ever comes back to Australia. Andrew, um, if you're out there, we'd love to have you on the show. All right, so I'll go in. I actually don't have any of this pre-save, so we're going um, the long way around here. But mm -hmm. so this is kind of um, what I'll do. I'll go in and start filling in the filling in my um, my sketch. 
Um, I'm not trying to get a perfect result here. I'm using this brush for a reason. It kind of gives us these little imperfections. Yeah. Um, it is possible to go and add additional stuff afterwards, but um, for this kind of thing, I'm just gonna kind of just rough it in the, the outline and then color it as per coloring. Cool. Why you do that? That's a good time for questions, guys, as well. So. Festus was saying not long ago you saw a, a video demo of Font Cell for plugin for both Photoshop and Illustrator for making your own fonts. Have you uh, ever tried? Have you checked that out, or have you ever tried to make your own font? I, I got to be the least educated person in terms of plugins. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I've used about two in my life that made any sense to me. Right. And creating fonts is a long job. Like it's a big job. Yeah. Um. I feel like if you're not if you don't start that job in with the mindset that you're going to finish it and and finish it proper, I don't think you should start it because mm. it's a massive job and and there's guys out there that pump these things out really quick. But um, I, I just think I like that my fonts don't have much order uh, and mm. and you're kind of paying for a bespoke design. So to have a font that I could go to like whenever I need to, I'd, mm. I'd get sick of it. I'd, I'd need about a hundred fonts before I'm happy with a library that yep. suits my needs. Yeah, I know some typographers who do create fonts at, at, for a living, and I think they've they've spent like three, even five years. I yeah. think I think they're a bit like artists. Yep. And that they'll have they'll have a pro they'll have just multiple projects kind of sitting somewhere, and they'll and they'll for whatever reason stop building that font library, and maybe come back to it a couple of years later, yeah. or maybe they'll never come back to it. And I think it's it's a real hard process to get sounds, your sounds exhausting. I think it's hard to get your fonts available for the public to buy. Art uh, well, sorry, you can make them available, but like mm. to get them on those good like my fonts and stuff like that. There's a whole process there that, but it seems like it's just too much work for me. Yeah, I think the I mean the best fonts have multiple weights. Correct. Like you got glyphs that need to be included as well. Like if you're creating a font system for other people to use that's kind of expected yeah these days because there's so much available and and there are really some great fonts like available online there's a couple of sites that just yeah amaze me like how how often they put new fonts on and things like that but mm. um look i wouldn't mind checking out the plugin um i just know me and i'll end up doing the same process <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of getting there it's almost like a chalkboard. Yeah, I really like how um, it just like really natural. Like it feels really good while you're drawing. I kind of feel like it's retained that um, pencil to paper kind of vibe that mm. everyone's so concerned about these days. It's interesting, like going down the whole font font route. I know um, Wayne Thompson quite well. Australian type foundry and he did the ABC font okay a number of years ago and did a he did a presentation for an Adobe event some, some years ago and I'd never actually seen it before um, and the level of detail that he had to go for creating. into yeah because it had to be shown on old TVs at really small font size it had to work on their website it had to work on their new apps just billboards so. like you name it and um yeah, it seemed really complex. Yeah, I just, I, and hats off to guys that do it. Like, I, I think yeah, uh, it's a massive job, but I think people forget that these fonts that are created, they've been created in such a way that they can be used across all mediums and, and you know, utilised with user ease. Mm. Um, I've, I've downloaded a few fonts that, like, you know, have really poor kerning or, and I know we can adjust it, but like that should be the first thing you should be addressing. Yeah. But um, there we go. We've I've drawn, basically inked it how I how I'm hoping it's going to end up. Mm. That again goes back to client. It hasn't changed much. I've taken the serifs off the social club just because didn't want them. <laughs> I'm not. It's like, more of a it's more of a casual club. Yeah, this club doesn't do serifs. Not, not super formal. <laughs> <laughs> so now the serifs are gone and everyone's happy. I, I basically will go in and I will save this guy. So just and again a recap. That is where we were. 
versus where we are now. So it, mm. it has changed a lot, but you can still see that the bones are there. Like this one's a lot more straight. I've gone with more of a curved look and that's just what we're going to do. But I oh. just want to put it. All right, now I'm gonna just, you can either flatten this or get rid of what you want, probably save a copy. I'm just gonna crop in on the artwork. Save as. Save. So yeah, now I'm just gonna save that onto the desktop. Just as a Photoshop file? Yeah, just as a PSD. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to jump into Illustrator. Oh, wow. Surprise, surprise. True grit in there as well. Right there. <laughs> so I've bought swatches and um, brushes off his side as well. But now I'm going to open this little graphic. Test. So I saved it without a background, so to reduce the file size, so it comes in pretty quick. So that's our logo in Illustrator, and it is still an image. So right. obviously we all know about the, the live tracing. So how often do you use live trace? Um, honestly, not. Not as much as I, I thought I would, mm. um, but there are times, sorry, am I just going to set this? Um, there are times that I do think, ah, oh, it'll be cool if I could just get this across the line real quick. So, mm. but I think for things like this, there's no shame in doing it this way. Mm. Um, I, I like the fact that it converts it so quickly, um, depending on the product, of course, but yeah. um, I, I just like that what you see is what you get and drawing at 600 dpi in photoshop i'm usually in a good spot that i know when i live trace that we're not going to lose a lot of details and mm. stuff and you know that obviously in illustrator you can come in here before you hit the um, image trace and you can change the, th the threshold a little bit so to adjust that graphic with less or more um, you can change the paths to low or higher so yeah but obviously what that's doing is putting 220 pars with almost 9,000 anchors, which results in a pretty slow file. So it's up to you how you do it. If you've got a good computer, it shouldn't really matter, but um, let's just pretend it's an average machine. We're gonna keep everything as low as possible. Just by ignoring white, it drops by half anyway. So I think that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Just close that. And then I'll just do expand. There we go. So now at least we've got our graphic and we can start. Oh, what's going on there? Right, just fix my colors here. What's going on here? There we go. It's like selected something behind it. Yeah, it's weird. But there we go. So now it's a vector and it's wireframes there. We can either see that. Sorry, I forgot your name. That person that asked the straight into Illustrator question. It might have been Catherine. Catherine. Yeah. So to her question, this is probably where it would have been if I had drawn that exactly the same as that. But this is the, the long way around. Mm. And yeah, no corners cut here. But now I've got it as a vector. So we can go in and, okay, are we happy with it? I don't know, did that texture apply too much um, too much edge on here? Like, is it too crazy or are you happy with it? Mm. Your call, but um, you, there are ways around fixing that. So I would usually go in and just say, so I'll grab the pencil tool and I'll zoom in so we can see. So you can go in and spend the minutes going around the whole graphic and just kind of smooth it out yeah smooth it out a little bit or maybe you want another extra cuts in there oh sorry so you can put cuts in or yeah do the reverse fix it up so it's pretty handy um depends how long you want to spend on the job mm. or you could get the smoothing tool 
um, the smooth tool, which is under the pencils. And then you can go in and it kind of, it's kind of do the whole edge. Yeah, like just to get rid of a couple of them, but I still want to retain that choppy look. So I'm just gonna, you can see them disappearing. I don't know if it's very clear, but so there's four there. Now there's three, like it does it pretty subtle changes, but I think it's a nice little, takes that really sharp edge off, mm. usually. But yeah, so that's that part. So that's how I would get there from my skin version, mm. play with the levels, adjust the levels, um, and then kind of use that as the bones and then create my font from there. Yeah. Um, that's one way. Obviously, uh, like we said, this is just one my my way of doing it. It's it might not be the right way, but I, I really enjoy doing it that way. I feel like it's a it's a it's a therapeutic way of drawing, and yeah. I feel like from start to finish, I I controlled that whole process. Mm. Um, so that's that. But there's also the other version, which I know we spoke about real quickly. I just get rid of that. While you're doing that, we have a question, another sure. question for Catherine, was um, asking, I mean, probably don't want to go into exact detail, mm -hmm. but like how much you would charge for a typical bespoke job. Mm -hmm. um, like you might want to go into exact details, but sort of the follow-up question she has there is, do you base it on an hourly rate? Um, no, mine's product, uh, sorry, project specific. Yeah. Um, I just, I think the hourly rate always used to bite me in the butt a little bit. Me too. Oh my I, gosh. I'd be like, oh yeah, five hours. Uh, he comes Always more. Client from hell and it's 15 hours, but they don't want to pay additional yep. 10 hours. So yep. um, I just, I charge what I think is appropriate for the job and I've got a, a little bit of a disclaimer in my my um, contract that kind of says outside of this many changes, there's an yep. X amount of um, dollars incurred kind of thing. So Do you ever do it like a day rate? Um, day rates are kind of if I'm like if I'm doing a painting yeah or something like that um, I, I feel like that makes sense but yeah day rates don't I uh, feel like it's the same as an hourly rate like mm. it, you think it might take a day and then you're there for a whole week and mm. you've underquoted so yes yeah, in short it's just a project specific quote basically yeah yeah, yeah. one um, of the, yeah one of the best advice someone someone told me was yeah not to do an not to do an hourly rate yeah. I uh, just, I find I can never get it right. Mm. After all this time, you think I'd know, but um, you can't, you just can never tell with clients what they're, what they're thinking or what their, their vision is with the project. And you don't want to undercut it like, and sew yourself short. So yep. if you want to be real and you quote that 15 hours, you probably won't get the job as well. Yeah. <laughs> like people yeah. get scared off pretty easily. Mm. All right. Let's, so now, let's just leave it. So that's um, that was coming out of a sketch basically. So that was um, that was from paper to Photoshop via camera, and then doing it that way. Mm. Um, these sketches that I've got here are a little bit. You can see they're a little neater, and it's probably because um, the the computer has Control Z, and you can fix up a mistake pretty easy. Right. On paper, it's always looking a bit rubbish but these are kind of a little handful of things that I did. So you did these straight into Photoshop? This was straight into Photoshop mm -hmm. so that's using um, Kyle's pencil brush so that we get a little bit of a right you know just a cheat cheat a little bit and mm -hmm. make people feel like you're still working hand uh, old school. Mm -hmm. Which um, you guys have in Photoshop if correct. you want to download that and play with that. Yep so that pencil brush is in there um, set it up however you wish um, but yeah, so that's a, just a mixture of hand styles that they're, they're generally kind of where my my hand style stops. Like I like these kinds, I like cursive, mm. but I like having, you know, I like punk music and I like a bit thrashy, so I'll always have throw some of those in there as well. Right. And then you can see that I've got some versions where I've considered how I can have imagery work with the, the typography, so I've considered mm. some options for the client to have a look at. But um, I won't go into how to redraw that whole thing again because it's the same process. This is just mm -hmm. to show you that you can eliminate that paper sketch if it's not something you right. vibe. Just don't do it. It's um, no, one's, no one's judging you. You're probably doing better for the environment by not using <laughs> all that paper, but instead consuming all that energy yeah. in the device. But... um. Yeah, so the, th the the process will stay the same. 
I'll pick a font, just recapping. So pick the font, drag it into a higher DPI file, um, create, like, use that as your bones, but adjust where it needs to. Um, take some detail out, add some in, do what you need to, but keeping it black and white because the end goal is that you're probably going to end up in Illustrator and using a vector file. Mm. But on the flip side to that, if you want to do, you know you're doing a digital piece and maybe it's just for you to have a muck around with, um, we can do it using, so we're going to use a font. So this is a font on... Um, just off the computer. I, I'm pretty sure I may have purchased it at some point. But um, so this is the font I like. I, well, I don't really like it. I just like the, the overall flow of it. But then I want to go in and, you know, I want to change some things and I know I'm going to use these brushes and this effect. So how, like I'll start putting notes, like I'll write on the actual artwork and just have, doesn't matter. I like that, like writing little notes to yourself. Yeah, like I know that these things bother me. Right. All the little bums, whatever <laughs> they are. Like, Sorry to whoever created this. I just don't like these things. Yeah. That's what I'm circling. Um, I'll make some notes, like just visual notes of what I like and what I don't like. And I think it's okay. Like someone step in and correct me if I'm wrong. Like mm -hmm. I know it's a, a, a font that someone else has created, but I'm using it as a template only. And then I'm going to go in and basically I'm going to, I'm going to like warp it and add something like I'm going to warp it, tilt it, get the, the direction that I want. Um, you can go in and sorry, you can go in and warp that thing. <laughs> mm. So if you want, maybe you want this thing bigger, you want to get some like more like like a wavy look going on mm -hmm. and obviously like the font looks rubbish now i've like fully warped it but i know that the d is going to live here i'd probably straighten it up so you know i'll go in and i'll finesse finesse it again but that's my font and that's what i've created and then i'll do the same thing this is the same theory again it's um i've got it pre-loaded so we don't have to go through that again same thing created the bones of it you can see the where the changes are pretty minor but it's still I've made it my own I've, I've created some new lines some some new edges on it and then the process again goes through fix it up that's using the same brush they ask for this that swoosh again everyone's asking it's hot topic <laughs> everyone wants this everyone wants the swoosh and then from there this is so this is my digital piece um I know that I'm not gonna take it into illustrator at this point I just want to add a little bit more I, I want more texture in it so there's again some brushes in here and I had some people on Instagram ask me the other day what were the texture brushes I applied in the video that I put up mm. and this is again special effects brushes courtesy of Adobe and Kyle and it's these spatter brushes mm. so there's a dense like a mid and a low kind of thing um, I just grabbed this low one can leave it on 200 I'm using red yep and then I'll just go in so these these brushes are, are still pressure sensitive so the harder you press the uh, press <laughs> the harder you press the bigger the spatter right. like it spreads out um and then you can like collect it a little bit better by not pressing too hard so it's it's kind of you've still got a lot of control in this but mm. um I'll just get that brush actually I think it's this one might just Make it a bit smaller. <clears throat> Change it to white. And then I'll just, I might just add like some little, so it's a bit more. That looks cool. Yeah, it kind of makes it look like it's been printed and just like, like when I um, scanned in that image, you could see that there was a few light spots and, and darker spots on the, the, the pressure of the, the pen. So you're painting on or you're erasing away? Uh, this is just painting, painting. at the moment, yeah. yeah. So I'm just adding a little bit there. Now I've got like a texture over it. It adds a lot, doesn't it? That just that one step then. Yeah, just, it just added a lot. Well, to if it. you, a you lot can of see the difference, it like it just. I don't know, again, it's going back to that feeling natural and, and yeah. making things. 
like just feel a bit more organic that looks like it's been hand printed and like you know yeah. it's got some of that the imperfections of the the liner or something if you're doing a liner print um so and then again you can add more so then i'll get like the black and maybe i'll do some it's just some little like over overspray here not too much and is it showing up on there yeah know. yeah yeah really subtle can see, it, can see it here anyway so it's just like adding those little imperfections yeah just to give to it show that know, it's just, unique just to make it a little bit more special and then mm. you know if you want to get the instagram likes just chuck that on a fancy picture of a cowboy and <laughs> you're in like you'll probably get no likes because no one knows there's no likes on there anyway yeah there's no likes on instagram anymore so that is that's good to go you could use that for for any so that's all on a transparent background it's it's good to go as is digital wise um you could go in add as much or as little as you want that's a preloaded one that i did so you can see i've i've mixed it up with like dense parts and and lighter parts mm. um just so that it does have that like really like organic feel but um and then if you want to add that thing into oops sorry Maybe the client came back to you after those five hours we quoted and said, hey, uh, <laughs> how much to get a, a hero logo or something added? So maybe I'll just go in and I'd draw a cowboy because, you know, I drew this cowboy because, like... He's a bandit. Just, just cowboys at the moment, just Western and country music and all that jazz. <laughs> it's all in, is it? That and the swooshes. Swooshes and cowboys, that's all I know. <laughs> all right, so now I've got my logo. I'm just going to make a copy here. Oh, you can still see the likes if you open it on your computer? No, nah, don't don't go there. You'll be a very unhappy person. <laughs> I, think it's a, I think it's a good change. I think it's, what do you think? I think it's great. It's yeah. put everyone back on like a level playing field. Right. Um, I used to be very caught up in it and... Mm. This is not typography <laughs> at all, but I just I used to get bummed out a lot. Yeah, and it's funny. Like, people, well, why didn't this one's really cool? Why yeah, this, this is one... my favorite. Yeah. yeah, and it's funny because it like it it shaped the way I was creating art for a yeah. bit as well, which yeah. is it's a it's a very silly way to be because you. But should all have... of us are like that, right? Anyone using it, anyone on the platform. Look, I just want people to like me. So uh, <laughs> up by Dale on Instagram, chuck a like. <laughs> chuck us a follow. Yeah, throw chuck in us a comment. Follow. What's the currency now? Comments, I suppose. I think comments, yeah, or just follows. Yep. All right. Anyway, sidetracked. So here's my Bandit's logo. Here's my Bandit. It's all happening. It's definitely a, the coolest club we've ever been to. Definitely. I still think you could get a pretty good cocktail. Yeah, if they all served us looking like that. Yeah. You won't care you're what you're up. getting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. So, and yeah, so that's basically it. Um, Yeah, so that's it. And again, you could take that logo into Illustrator and you could redraw this. Um, there are ways of adding those textures in, mm. um, but that's a digital version of basically digital only. I wouldn't suggest sending it to print. It might print, might not, depends mm. who's printing it for you. But I just like, it's good to experiment and try new things. Um, even that logo there, the little cowboy, um, I just felt like growing a cowboy and <laughs> I learned some stuff with those watercolor brushes and the textures and it's nice to kind of push yourself outside of your your norm and what you do so yeah. I think it's important to spend a lot of time redrawing fonts and and you know learning where your limits are as an artist and things like that but um we are able I think we've got a couple more minutes yeah, we got more time if you want to show something else. Yeah, I can quickly show you that those textures and the, the rules of those textures apply within Illustrator. So if anyone has any questions, now's a great time as we kind of close it out. So if you've got any questions for Dale at all, go for it. We'll be around for another couple of minutes. All right. So this is our, our um, Flynn special, Bandit Social right. Club. This mm -hmm. is... This is looking great. Everyone's pretty happy. Um, I've just lost my layers, but that's cool. All right, so, so I've just made a new layer and this is 
Can I just say, like, I'm not, um, I have no shares or ownership in True Grip, but I, do I download a lot of his stuff. So these textures here that I'm about to show you are swatches mm. that he's created, um, and they're fantastic because it, again, allows you to um, have that gritty feel and mm. work within a another platform. Um, and if I use the blob brush, you know, I watch back. Some of these live streams i'm pretty sure i talk about the same things a lot of the time so <laughs> feel free to go back and um have a watch if you just want to see or hear what i'm talking about um i think so yeah if you want to see the previous ones by dale i think it was episode 20 and episode six uh, i think I, yeah well, they were pretty they were, they were wide apart mm. all right so i've got the um the graphic and i want to add some of that texture i'm using the blob tool and you can see it's only adding like really minimal yeah um textures in there and they're black because i want them to be and i'm going to show you why well firstly they're set to black so i can't really change it um i won't do the whole logo because i'm not sure if this mac will handle it but so now i've got those um textures added mm. via the swatch they've created um they also do the the leg work for you and they supply you with an action that then will basically live trace those into um actual oh wow dots so now does that come with the so that the, comes in the purchase in so the purchase. yes wow, and then now i can go in and i've got my white dots oh wow so that's I, pretty cool in the time it would take you to usually do that um this goes on to our conversation about working smart and like finding yeah. ways to, to progress and, and and take your art further. It's great to have resources like this and mm. um, everything that Adobe offers now in our brushes and actions and stuff. So oh, we should all be using actions more often. Well, actions are pretty, uh, they're pretty powerful. Mm. Um, I, look, I've got a whole of two custom ones that I do, but um, yeah, and, and that's for the most part, that's how it's all done. Um, it doesn't matter what the font style is, it all follows the same style, um, whether it's blocky or brush or or whatever. Um, mm. That's that's basically it. So that's um, that's the Bandit Social Club in that's, a nutshell. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cool. I love I love I love it when we create something like from scratch, like just on the show. You know, it's nice. It's a it's a nice way to show that um, I, I guess things can go wrong. Um, everyone's human. Probably yeah. don't be so hard on yourself if, if you're doing something and you feel like you've done it wrong, you probably haven't. Um, that logo is probably not the greatest thing I've ever done, but um, I will try to sell it. So, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it's nice to just see a, a logo finished and, and know that you can work, I guess, efficiently these days. And there's so much at our disposal. So yeah, it, it's a good showcase to show that there are options out there. There's, there's font resources, there's um brush resources swatches mm. textures it's all out there um you can make your own or just have fun with the ones that are out there yeah it's, it's awesome cool. yeah it's really cool happy with that it's um uh, it's a uh, it gets my tick of approval yes really. the dale, the dale <laughs> yeah. tick me too the dale so swoosh we'll just have to wait and see what the feedback is on um how well i did as a typographer but it's um hand lettering by dale hand lettering yeah very good. Well, thanks everyone in the chat. Um, some great questions in there. I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, where can people find out more about you? You did the plug. Uh, yeah, Instagram. so you can go on Instagram and find most of my recent stuff, Art mm -hmm. by Dale, um, or you could go on Behance or um, dalebajini.com. And awesome. it's all there. It's all, it's all inspirational, hopefully. And yeah, throw some likes. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone again for joining us. Um, if you're watching YouTube, let us know in the comments um, what you thought or if you have any feedback and um, we'll check it out. We'll see you this time, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Australian Sydney time. Um, we'll see you then. Thanks again, Dale. Thank you. Cheers. Awesome.